the Lomachenko being overrated narrative is destructive and disrespectful to the sport of boxing. Knuckleheads, welcome to the Fighters Rep, where we give you free fights, interviews in the fight game, and fight commentary from the mind of a promoter slash lawyer. I had to address this because this has become the most delusional, disconnected from reality narrative that I've heard that's so absurd that it leaves the narrative of Teofimo Lopez being too big for Lomachenko way back in the rear view, all the way in the dust. This narrative that Vasil Lomachenko, a two-time Olympic gold medalist who went 396 and won throughout the entirety of his amateur career, a guy who won a title in three different weight classes with just 15 fights before he went into his 16th fight against Teofimo Lopez. The narrative that a guy like that is somehow overrated because he lost a fight to Teofimo Lopez, the current champion, the champion who he tried to unify against, a young man who was undefeated in the professional ranks before taking on Lomachenko. The fact that anyone can say that Vasil Lomachenko was overrated because he lost to this guy just continues to perpetuate the delusion, the corruption, and the destruction of boxing. I'm going to explain that in this video. First and foremost, by using and by auditing Vasil Lomachenko's record. So let's get right into it. First and foremost, we talked about the amateur record, 396 wins. One loss that was avenged twice over. Two Olympic gold medals. Three medals in the world championships. A, a gold in Milan in 2009. Another gold in Baku in 2011. And a silver in 2007 in Chicago. A European Championship gold in Liverpool in 2008. Junior World Championships gold in Agadir in 2006. And the Cadet European Championship gold medal in 2004 in Saratov. <clears throat> Let's go straight into his professional record. For all of those people that I believe, again, are absolutely delusional by calling this man overrated. <clears throat> So in his first fight, believe it or not, he won a WBO international featherweight title. Not a major title, but an international featherweight title against Jose Ramirez. Fine. In his second fight, just in his second fight, he challenged the very rugged, very tough Orlando Salido for a WBO featherweight title. I mean, how many people do you know that could challenge for a WBO featherweight title? in just their second fight against a rugged, tough customer, a tough hombre like Orlando Salido. <clears throat> and while Lomachenko lost that fight by split decision, if you're an objective boxing fan and you watched that fight and you watched how many low blows he took, you still probably came away with the feeling that Lomachenko should have probably gotten a points decision in that fight. But I digress. He next went up against Gary Russell Jr., okay, who is the current WBC, WBO featherweight title holder, a guy who's 32 and 1, and that nobody wants to fight at featherweight and super featherweight. And it's gotten to the point where nobody wants to fight Gary Russell so much that he's thought about challenging Terrence Crawford at 147 pounds. But I digress. That was Lomachenko's third fight, and he beat Gary Russell Jr. He had a few other fights, but some names may have skipped your mind. So let me remind you, he fought Roman Rocky Martinez, who was also a champion, a junior lightweight 
WBO champion. He held the title three times. <clears throat> and he knocked Roman Rocky Martinez out. Now, as I'm explaining this to you, I don't want you guys to get the wrong idea. Teofimo Lopez and Lomachenko had a great fight that I scored a draw along with Andre Ward, somebody who knows about boxing. He was one of the best boxers ever. But my point is, Teofimo Lopez is a great fighter. He earned the victory. So I'm not sitting here defending Lomachenko and trying to argue that he won that fight. What I'm arguing against is the fact that he's overrated. That's a delusion. So let's get back to it. Roman Rocky Martinez, guy who held the championship, the guy who held a guy who held the championship at junior lightweight three different times, knocked him out. Then he fought Nicholas Walters, the axe man, a guy who nobody wanted to fight. A guy who was 28 and 0, or I'm sorry, 26 and 0 at the time. <clears throat> and a guy who Vasil Lomachenko gave his only defeat, also a former champion, WBO junior lightweight champion, also held a WBA featherweight title. Let's continue. Uh, he fought Jason Sosa. And not only did he make Jason Sosa quit, but he made Nicholas Walters quit, the one we just talked about. And Sosa was also a WBA super featherweight title holder with a, with a record of 23 and 4 right now. So, not some bum off the street. Then he fought Miguel Mariaga who was a three-time title challenger, beat him. Then he fought Guillermo Rigondeau in a fight that everybody thought where Lomachenko was going to get exposed at. Sure, Rigondeau was coming up a couple weight classes, but that was his choice to do so. And Lomachenko took on the fight against Rigondeau, a guy who had never lost, and a guy who, like him, was a two-time gold medal winner. And Rigondeau got schooled so bad that he quit on his stool. Nobody has ever done that to Guillermo Rigondeau ever. And nobody will ever do that to him again. But I digress. Let's continue looking at this resume. And let's continue with this audit. Jorge Linares. A guy who was the consensus baddest man in the division. When Vasil Lomachenko fought him, a guy who was also a former titleist, three weight classes, a guy who was a Ring Magazine title holder as well, and a guy who is currently 47 and 5. And, you know, if you don't think Jorge Linares was a good fighter when Vasil Lomachenko fought him, I really don't know what to tell you. Then he fought Jose Pedraza. Jose Pedraza, another title holder. Beat him. Then he fought Anthony Krola, right? Anthony Krola was also a former title holder. Knocked him out. I was actually at that event at the Staples Center. Knocked him out cold. Cold. Then he fought Luke Campbell. Then he fought Luke Campbell, a guy who was also a gold medalist in the Olympics. And a guy who's just a fantastic fighter. A guy who's a fantastic fighter, Luke Campbell. Man, Luke Campbell's only ever lost to really good fighters, Jorge Linares. Vasil Lomachenko, you know, top level guy. And then after Luke Campbell, we had the Teofimo Lopez fight. And in that fight, Lomachenko took on a guy who, yes, he was a little bit bigger than him, but nothing out of this world. It wasn't towering over Lomachenko. In fact, they were about the same height. That's what it looked like to me. Teofimo looked stronger, sure. Younger, more athletic, faster, stronger. 
Sure, he was all of that. But, you know, you're going to run into that in the boxing game. The whole, listen, the whole narrative of Teofimo Lopez being too big is just ridiculous and not something that anybody who takes the sport seriously would think about. You know, I respect Lomachenko for going up a couple weight classes. But whatever, that's not the issue here. The issue here is how somebody with a resume like that, I don't care if he's only had 16 fights, Somebody with a resume like that with those kind of results is not overrated because an undefeated young phenom like Teofimo Lopez was able to squeak by him. And maybe the judges didn't have it squeaking by because one of the judges scored at 119 to 109, which is an absolute psychopath of a scorecard. What I mean by squeak by is Guys that really understand the sport, like Andre Ward and myself, watched that and had it a draw or very close. If you would have given it one point advantage to either guy, I'm okay with it. A couple points extra to Teofimo, maybe he performed a little bit better. Fine, I'm good with that. But to say that Vasil Lomachenko is overrated because he lost one fight, because I don't even believe he lost in my heart of hearts, that Orlando Salido fight, but I'll take this L from Teofimo Lopez. To say a guy like that is overrated with those results in the career he's had, to cast him away and say he's overrated is the most disrespectful, delusional, sociopathic thing I've ever heard. And listen, I indicated that this is the perpetuation of the destruction of boxing, and that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. Because in the UFC, if you lose a fight, you're not shot. You're not shot worn. You weren't overrated. You fought the best guy in your division or the best guy available, and you lost, and you can come again, and you still maintain your respect. There's integrity. Boxing not so much and i've been preaching against this bs a side versus b side manufacturing undefeated fighters ridiculous boxing culture since the very beginning of this channel and it's a culture that as a kickboxing promoter i will fight to the death against to make sure that that culture never penetrates and festers in kickboxing the way it has in boxing. Only in boxing can a guy like Vasil Lomachenko lose one fight against the best young absolute superstar in his division by the skin of his teeth and be called overrated. Listen, I want to also add this. Some of you get butt hurt when I give my opinion on here and start crying to me on YouTube and in the comments section and start crying to me from your mother's house on Instagram. I don't want to hear it. If you don't like the channel, if you don't like my opinion, if you don't like the fact that I thought that fight was a draw or maybe one point or two points to either guy, too bad. You don't want to be here? Get out. I don't need you. This is my channel. Okay? This is my channel. I give my opinion. I built this. If you don't like it, you could leave. If you can handle a disagreement, you could stay. So come correct or don't come at all. Additionally, my question to you guys. Was Lomachenko overrated? Give me your thoughts. Obviously, if I disagree with you, I think you're crazy. Was he the greatest boxer ever? I don't know about that. But he sure as hell looked good to me. And he sure as hell doesn't seem overrated to me. It seems to me that Teofimo Lopez may have been underrated. So tell me what you think. Now go ahead, subscribe to the channel. Click the bell notification icon and the subscribe button below. Join Knucklehead Nation to help me build this channel and a promotion with integrity that's not going to shit on people for one loss. Hell, I don't care how many fights you lose as long as you come and you put up a fight. That's what people want to see. 
Get your fighters rep gear in the link below. Support the channel. We got shirts, masks, hoodies, tanks, whatever you want. They're dope. Look at this thing. Super clean. Get you one. All proceeds are going to get reinvested right back into the channel, right back into the promotions. Knuckleheads, I appreciate your time. I'm out.